Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for insightful analysis and enlightening discussions. Hello, I'm Michael Bull, your host to the world of commercial real estate. Today we're going to talk about the multifamily market. You know, multifamily has been the darling of commercial real estate. And it's interesting because there's a lot of opportunities in multifamily, you know, from the Class A core assets in the major markets to, to the small multifamily projects that uh, individuals can buy. And the multifamily market has really been doing well, and I think it's been surprising a lot of people. But there are some questions. What is the impact of new supply? On, on performance and is there still a good time to get in and build apartments and to invest in multifamily? Well, please welcome my first guest, Stephanie McCleskey. She is Vice President of Research with Axiometric. Stephanie, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Michael. Thank you for inviting me to join the show again. I'm happy to be here. We appreciate it. You guys do a good job looking at the performance of the multifamily market around the country. And Stephanie, how did the market perform in the first quarter and uh, how did uh, 2014 wrap up? You know, I think the last time that we spoke with you was third quarter of 2014, and we were expecting the apartment market to begin to decelerate a little bit due to the amount of new supply that was delivering, but 2014 was certainly a pleasant surprise for everyone. It was one of the best years of the apartment market. Um, We haven't seen rent growth this rates this high since 2011, and we're in the fifth year into the cycle of this apartment cycle. The previous cycle was 2004 to 2008, so it was a little bit shorter than where we're at right now. So 2014, we saw rent growth round up at about 4.7% on an annual basis for effective rent, and occupancy ended up at about 94.9%. 1Q15, we saw that that rent growth continued to increase. So annual rent growth was at 5%, and occupancy remained steady compared with um, the previous quarter. So really strong rent growth at a national level. Well, that's amazing. Does that growth surprise anyone? Absolutely. I think it it surprised pretty much the the majority of the industry. We were all expecting that because of the amount of new supply that was delivering that we'd see um, rent growth begin to slow down, and that's just not what we have been seeing. So definitely uh, good news for the owners and operators and maybe a little bit not so much for the uh, renters. Right. And it, occupancy at 94.9%. That's interesting because as a broker, that's what we always suggest. It's 95% <laughs> occupancy. But historically, what kind of occupancy do you see in the apartment industry? Historically, long-term average, we're seeing somewhere around 93%. So we're mm-hmm. definitely highly occupied, occupied Excuse me, at a national level. Uh, we consider at Axiometrics that 95% occupancy is functionally full. So what we're seeing right now is all of this new delivery that's coming in, but there's really not a, a lot of existing supply t- for all of these renters to move into. So, uh, you know, with 95% occupancy, it really gives – Uh, landlords the pricing power to continue to push rents. Yeah, it really does. And so what do you expect moving forward and through the rest of 2015? Do you expect the continued growth of, of this percentage? Well, one thing I do know that is that it's hard to continue to increase rates at the rate that they've been going. So especially as more supply begins to deliver in 2015, we'll begin to see rent growth decelerate and come back more in balance with what's happening with demand. So by the end of 2015, we're going to see annual effective rent growth slow down to about 3.6%. Occupancy is going to drop to 94.6, still very high occupancy rate. Um, And then 2016, we're expecting to decelerate a little bit more, and then we're going to expect it to go back up. So keep in mind the long-term average for annual effective rent growth at a national level is somewhere around 2.2%. We're not expecting annual effective rent growth to drop below 2.2% at least throughout the next forecasted five years. So still really strong market for, um, for apartments. That's good news. I think all the apartment owners out there are doing the Snoopy dance right now. (laughs) Certainly. I I bet they are. Well, tell us about performance for the different classes of communities. Sure, absolutely. So uh, when we break down asset class, um, we're doing it on, based on the level of effective rent at each each property. So when we're looking at how asset classes, different asset classes are performing within a market, one thing that we're noticing is that it's more of the class B type properties that are the ones that are outperforming the rest of the market right now. Um, so we're seeing class B properties at 5.6 annual um, percent annual effective rent growth 
And one of the reasons that we think that those Class B properties are doing the best is those are the properties that are more in the suburban type areas. So if you think about where a lot of the new supply has delivered at a very close proximity to existing supply, it's going to be in the urban core areas or more of the Class A type luxury product. So that's the asset class that we're seeing with the slowest rent growth at 4.3%. But again, keep in mind, 4.3% is a phenomenal annual rent growth rate. Yeah, that is. Well, Stephanie, talk to us about new construction, new supply levels. I think in some markets, some people are starting to get a little concerned. Uh, What do you guys see? Well, you know, at a national level, 2014, we saw about 216,000 units deliver. And 2015, at a national level, we're expecting 283,000 units. So when we take a look at that number, it sounds like quite a bit. But if you compare that to what we've seen historically happen in the apartment market, it's just back to the normal levels that we've seen for multifamily permitting. So when you break it down by market, um, we're not necessarily concerned so much with overbuilding. There are some markets that may have pockets or areas that ha- that have or are expecting more new supply than the, what they've seen historically, typically those are going to be the urban core type markets or, or sub-markets, excuse me, so the, the downtown areas um, where there's been a lot of new supply that's already delivered or expecting to deliver in very close proximity at a very similar price point to the existing product that's already there. So those are the areas that there might be a little bit more concern in, but at a market level, um, not really, no. Okay. Well, that's good news. If I'm a lender, investor, or developer today, if you're seeing above average rate growth, above average occupancy, but kind of the normal level of new construction, right? Absolutely. For sure. And what about the uh, urban versus suburban uh, new supply? Uh, What's the impact there? It seems like a lot of the land that we're selling is is very urban around the southeast for for new developments, but not so much uh, suburban. Right. And and so when you saw the first wave of new supply start to hit um, during this apartment cycle in 2012, the majority of those units that were delivering were delivering into the urban core type areas. Um, So now that we've seen uh, the new deliveries start to spread out just a little bit more, but it really hasn't permeated the suburban submarkets yet. So like I'd mentioned earlier, the class B type properties, those are the ones that are really outperforming right now. Because a lot of it, and of course, it depends on the market and what you're looking at, but there have been some markets where the submarkets, the urban core submarkets, have delivered more than what they've seen historically. And it's causing the the submarket level rent growth or annual rent growth to slow down quite a bit compared to what's happening in the rest of the market. So we are seeing an impact on uh, on existing products due to new supply in the urban core areas. That's interesting. We're talking with Stephanie McClexy with Axiometrics. And Stephanie, where do you see some opportunities for investors or developers today? So some of the things that, um, you know, it really depends on the strategy or what kind of return you're expecting. It's going to be different for several markets. It's going to be depending different depending on your whether you're an investor or a developer. We certainly see opportunity in the suburban submarkets right now, especially for development. Of course, that's depending what's happening with construction costs, what's happening with labor, um, what's happening with the employment levels for that particular market. Um, so there's a lot of factors that play into it. Um, but I, I definitely see a lot of opportunity just for the apartment industry as a whole. Uh, You know, I had mentioned earlier that we're forecasting out through the next five years that we're not going to see annual effective rent growth drop below the long-term average of 2.2%. So I think that is fantastic news for anybody that's wanting to invest or develop in the um, the, the apartment industry, so long as you you do your due diligence and make sure that uh, where you're trying to pencil out a deal, deal makes sense. Right. Right. Good, good points. What are some of the factors, Stephanie, that impact the multifamily market? I mean, we have a recovering housing market. We still have low interest rates for, for home buyers. You know, we also have the job market uh, changing and improving. You know, what are the factors that you think will impact uh, apartment performance moving forward? Sure. You know, what really affected the apartment market this cycle more than anything was the lack of supply that we had for so long at the beginning part of the cycle. So we had very little supply, and then we had a bump up in employment, which um, we didn't have the supply to handle that amount of new demand. So as new supply continues to develop, we'll continue to see deceleration in the rate of rent growth on an annual basis. 
So really, I think it comes back to what's happening with supply and demand, how much new supply is being delivered, whether it's multifamily or single family, how many jobs are being added, um, because for each new job, that person is going to need a, new, a, a place to live. So uh, you really have to take into account the entire housing market, not just what's happening with multifamily. I think demographics also plays a, a pretty big role in what's happening with the apartment industry right now. You know, who's renting? Uh, you know, Typically, the, the average renter age between 24 and uh, 34 years old, they're uh, either unwilling or unable to purchase a home right now. So I think that that really bodes well for the apartment market. It really does. Uh, And Stephanie, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you being on. Stay tuned. We'll have more on the multifamily market. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit Excelligent.com. That's X-C-E-L-I-G-E-N-T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit CommercialSearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.